What I'm really here to talk about is passion. The passion that uh, it takes to have a um, very big, world-class technology, entertainment, and design project take shape and really come into being. You know, harbors are a lot like uh, Batman and Robin. For every Hong Kong, there's a Macau. For every Vancouver, there's a Victoria Island. For every San Francisco, there's Sausalito. For Rio, there's Niteroi. For Sydney, there's Manly Beach. And for Istanbul, there's Uskadar. Well, for Gotham, there's St. George, where we're standing. In 1524, Giovanni de Veranzano discovered New York Harbor, and that's actually just a few feet from here. He landed here in, uh, in St. George, uh, or I should say on Staten Island. And uh, what happened was that the harbor of New York became the center of commerce for the Americas. In fact, it continued to grow and grow, and it became an extremely important harbor, not just for the United States, but for the world. Five years after George Washington made his inaugural speech on the steps of Federal Hall, staring right out here at this harbor, <clears throat> this fellow by the name of Cornelius Vanderbilt was born right here on Staten Island. And at the age of 11, he went out there and started a ferry service. And he built that ferry service with such passion that all the guys running in the harbor started calling him, as a joke, Commodore Vanderbilt. And it was supposed to be funny. But his passion was such that he was able to build a huge steamship line from this and then the first railroads in America and built what's considered the greatest fortune ever created in America. And of course, what he gave us was the Staten Island Ferry, which has become a worldwide legend unto itself. You know, this harbor really is the stuff of legends. Uh, the none bigger than the Statue of Liberty, uh, given as a gift to the people of France in 1886. This was a symbol of freedom and egalitarianism. And as uh, all the Americans who went to war after that steamed out through the harbor, they saluted the symbol of freedom at the Statue of Liberty. All the adventurers on cruise ships leaving for parts unknown all went past the statue and Lady Liberty. And of course, more than anything else, all the immigrants from all over the world uh, went past the statue and not just saw freedom and egalitarianism, they saw a better life. Well, this harbor, as big and important as it was, started to lose itself. It started to lose the southern part. Uh, I like to say it got kind of lost in the mist. But meanwhile, over here on Staten Island, beyond the mist, you had lovely Victorian homes, you had boardwalks, you had playing fields, all looking out over the magnificent harbor. But mostly what you had here were cows. And where there are cows, there is manure. And where there is manure, people like to stick their garbage. Well, luckily we fixed that, and that's the beautifully remediated uh, uh, spot that you just saw that used to be a garbage dump. You know, in 1964, the city planners decided <clears throat> that Staten Island deserved to be connected to the rest of, of New York City. So they built the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which at the time was the largest and longest sus suspension span in the world. It is still the largest suspension span in the Western Hemisphere. It's so long that from one end to the next, you have to adjust by several inches just because of the curvature of the Earth. Um, it's 18 meters longer than the Golden Gate Bridge, and nobody knows that. Why? Because it's eight miles from Manhattan, and it too gets lost in the mist. This is what everybody thinks of when they think of New York Harbor. They think of the statue, they think of the skyline, maybe the Brooklyn Bridge, and it's, it's very nice. But you know, this is St. George, and it's a pretty little harbor town, but it kind of pales in comparison when it's across the harbor from this. It's what I call the tale of two cities, actually the tale of two harbors. Now, Mayor Giuliani tried to fix that by putting in what has been deemed for a dozen years now the prettiest minor league ball field in America, in Richmond Park. And right after 9-11, um, we also here in Staten Island built the first memorial to that tragedy of 9-11 with wings of hope forever framing and connecting the north shore of Staten Island to the southern Manhattan where the Twin Towers stood and where the Freedom Tower now stands. 
But you know, basically, despite that lovely ball field and that memorial, and the, even this nice esplanade, what you basically have out there is a surface parking lot. And quite frankly, I believe that New York Harbor and the Gateway to America deserves better than a surface parking lot. So what do you do? Well, first of all, that old ferry from Commodore Vanderbilt um, has been bringing about two million tourists a year, believe it or not. It's the third most popular attraction in New York City. Uh, they've been bringing two million tourists a year over uh, on that ferry, but everybody here on Staten Island knows that all of those tourists do what we call the St. George Shuffle, and they come over and they go home. They don't get off the ferry, they don't, or they get off and shuffle around and take the ferry right back. What you need is something different. You need something that truly stands out, that matches the city of this scale and proportion, matches and complements the harbor of this magnificent proportion. You need something that will do all of that while not overshadowing the icons like the Statue of Liberty. You need something that has, I think someone else said today, the perfection of a circle, something to create a frame around the gateway to America. You know, the gateway to the west is the arch in St. Louis, which is 630 feet tall. Here at the Gateway to America, what we decided to do was to put up the Gateway to America with a 630-foot observation wheel, the largest in the world. And we believe that what it does is it creates just the right setting for, the, for this framing of the harbor and to reestablish the southern end of the harbor with the elegance and iconic grace that it deserves. Some other developers thought it might be nice to put the first ever outlet mall in New York City on the site next to us. And then you have Lighthouse Point renovating all of those old beautiful brick buildings and creating the National Lighthouse Museum next door to that. All built around this lovely little prettiest ball field, in, prettiest minor league ball field in America. And you take the two million people that ride that ferry and we're driving it to three to four million to come to the wheel and four to five million to come to that shopping mall. And now what you have is a world-class destination, the kind of destination that the Robin of Gotham deserves. That's going to be the, a half mile and the most activated and interesting half mile of New York Harbor when it's finished in two years. And by the way, that's not one developer. That's many developers and many people working together to make this vision come true. But you know, you have to get those five million people across five miles of harbor. What do you do? Well, in the uh, words of Commodore Vanderbilt, you go about and you talk to six different independent waterborne transit purveyors and you put uh, programs together to have them include you in their regular service and the special park and ride services and you crisscross this harbor with more harbor uh, ferry routes than this harbor has seen since the days of Commodore Vanderbilt. And you connect this island in the way it should be connected. Now, you have 22 million people in this metropolitan area. And they all want places to go and hang out and do interesting things that are fun. We now have a whole series of fun places, beautiful spaces. Places where you can start and end the Five Borough Bike Tour. Where you can start to the New York Marathon and maybe bring a new marathon that's just on Staten Island that starts and stops at that site. 
The music festivals have run out of places to go after Governor's Island and Randall's Island. They're looking for multiple venue spots like this. Food festivals, film festivals, they all want the kinds of multiple venues that we now have to offer on the North Shore of Staten Island. But to make a really world-class venue, you have to be able to attack the fact that the visitors come to New York for 2.7 days. One day belongs to Times Square, as it should. The second night is available. Our plan is to own the second night. We're going to own the night, and how do you do that? You make something that they'll all want to come for the second night. What do you do? You put on a nightly light show, the likes of which nobody's ever seen in any harbor. Now, this is the lovely little Robins Reef Lighthouse. Just to show you that we like working with pe people like <laughs> Maker Space and others, harbor, uh, rather, uh, lighthouses are antiquated. Who needs them anymore? GPS, radar, sonar, you don't need them. Well, you put a 24 by 7, 360 degree remote earth cam on top, which I have permission to do, thanks to the Noble Maritime Collection and the electrification that I'm doing of that lighthouse. Then you have something really different. Then you have the ability to show your nightly light show and maybe your holiday light show. <laughs> and then what you have is a digital footprint. And you can connect this not just physically to the world with harbor you know, transport, but you can connect it digitally so that the entire world can enjoy this venue. And that way you open up the hidden gems of Staten Island, things like Snug Harbor Cultural Center, things like the St. George Theater, places like the Makerspace. Look, this is the big kahuna. This is the best skyline in the world, in my opinion. And with Lady Liberty standing in front, what could be more special than that? No one is trying to overdo it, but it does need the compliment on the other side. And if you bring the six things that tourists and residents all want to do in New York, sightseeing, shopping, cultural events, theater, historical events, and sports, all of which we now have here, and you bring the passion, not just the passion of the developers, the ball field owners, the boat company people, but the passion of the community, then you have the ability to make this happen. Then you take this lovely little harbor town that has a view of the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge and has its own Golden Gate Bridge and has its own Radio City. By the way, just smaller than Radio City and just as pretty inside. And you have the prettiest minor league ball field in America. You add the world's largest observation wheel, the first shopping mall in New York City, or outlet shopping mall. Lighthouse Point with its historic National Lighthouse Museum. You connect it all physically, and then you connect it digitally, and then you have the St. George waterfront. That, my friends, is a true compliment to the Big Apple. You know, technology, entertainment, design, passion, these are the things you need to be able to make a project like this transformative and important, not just to Staten Island or New York City, but to the world. You know, it's been said that Staten Island never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> but I like to think that they've been smart enough to wait for just the right opportunity, one that is big enough to justify the use of this important space on the, at the gateway to America. Imagine, if you will, a 600 foot by 600 foot canvas connected physically to the most important city in the world and digitally to the entire world. Now you're talking about something special. You know, Victor Hugo said, dream no small dreams because they have no power to stir the hearts of men or women. Thank you for listening to this particular dream.